If one of your goals in life is to reach that million dollar status, having that one with six zeros followed by it, seeing it in a bank account, an investment account, this is the video for you guys. We're gonna be breaking it down exactly how much you have to invest to be in a millionaire status by the age of 65. So when you get to the retirement age of 65, it's interesting because even if you're getting a five to 7% return, you can pull 50 to $70,000 out of that account and still have the original amount there. Now this of course is really through some strategy, through some investing to make a millionaire. So what does it really take to be a millionaire? That is kind of the, the breakdown of what we're looking at. So if you're starting at age 25 to reach $1 million by 65, you can invest as little as $240 per month or even less, assuming a 9% return. Now overall guys, this at a younger age, if you really get into the investing element, when you look at average investments of the S&P 500, looking at a um, ETF like the VOO, which I do invest heavily in, it has almost a 10 and a half percent return over the last 30 year guys. So even being a little bit on the aggressive side, looking at a 9% return. Now we're not taking inflation into this. We're not taking a couple factors that could affect exactly how much you have in there. But just looking at the investment account, looking at putting money in there, $240 a month, by the age of 65, you will have a million, probably well over a million dollars in that account. So for this video, guys, we're gonna be looking at 35 years old because that's kind of the middle point of where people have to um, really start investing. That's when you're a little more concrete in your career. You probably have enough um, expendable income. And if you're budgeting properly, you're probably putting away a considerable amount in 401ks and our IRAs. So we're gonna be looking at three different scenarios, guys. One being a very conservative approach, which is going to be a 3% return. This is looking at your bonds. This is looking at your CDs high yield savings accounts, or a combination of stocks and bonds brings you to around 6%. And then 9% is a portfolio that has stocks, index funds, mutual funds, and ETFs growing around 9%. So you can see, if you're willing to take on a little bit more risk, guys, especially over the longer term, you can see a much higher return. And honestly, I'm not a financial advisor, but overall, if you're looking probably the 22, I would even say 40, 45, possibly even looking at the 50, um, moderately aggressive to aggressive would be kind of where I would put a majority of the portfolio, where if you're, again, even looking at the later ages, if you're 50, you still got 15 years for retirement. You still got some time to make up some of those, but you'll eventually want to start getting, at, and as you go closer to the retirement age, shifting it a little bit. So starting at 35, guys, exactly how much do you need to invest? So at 35, looking at a 3% return, it is $1,750 a month. That is right, guys, $1,750 per month to reach that sweet million-dollar spot by age 65. 3% return, even looking at today's standards, is relatively low in the return. I have high-yield savings that are paying 5%. We see CDs that are paying 5 and a quarter, 5 and a half even some that are paying 6%. So this makes it um, a little bit different, but during COVID times, of course, we didn't have that. A lot more money in the market. Now looking at the mid range, so looking at a 6% return, which is a little bit more conservative and also a little bit of stocks, you would have to put around $1,050 per month for 30 years to end up at that million dollars. So even looking at the disparity between those guys, if you're conservative at 3%, if you're looking to be a little bit more of a risk taker at 6%, you're saving $700 less a month, which is literally a game changer when it comes to the investment returns. This of course is due to compounding interest over 30 years. You can see guys, by literally investing $700 less, you're gonna have the same amount and $700 less 12 months, 30 years, incredibly, incredibly um, different when it comes to the contribution. Now, let's say we're going aggressive, guys. We're going in full ETF. We're doing the S&P 500. Again, we're looking at a 9% yield return. In this one, guys, you would actually take that investment down to $590 per month. So when you think 3%, you're at 1750. When you look at 9%, you're at 590 over 30 years to reach that million dollars. Now, that is a game changer, guys. So literally going through three, six, and 9%, you're going at 3%, $1,750 a month. You're going at 6% at $1,050 a month. And then you're looking at 9%, you're looking at $590 a month. 
And like I said, depending on what it's in, depending on the growth, even if you're yielding, let's say dollar cost average, higher than that 9% return, it can be an absolute game changer to catapult you into that sweet seven figure spot, guys, of hitting that million dollars. So how does it really break down though? I mean, what does it mean when you look at index funds, when you look at ETFs like the S&P 500, historically, they're saying in this article that it is roughly a 10 to 12% annual return. So looking at, of course, previous results, do not really indic are not indicative or do not show you what the future success of the S and P 500 is. But if you look at this year, guys, it has been incredibly well. And even looking at last year, 2022, through dollar cost averaging, I am roughly about 42, 43 percent is where the portfolio has been kind of fluctuating at. Because when I buy, I buy a lot more when the market is down. So when we've seen a massive dip around 2022 percent in 2022. I was buying consistently. We were buying on a two week basis, which really shows you the impact of dollar cost averaging where the market was down 22 last, you know, last year. It's up about 22 this year. I'm up 40 plus percent, which again makes a really big difference. Now, of course, you can rely on a couple different things here. Um, one, you can buy individual stocks. Now, this is what a lot of people do when you look at your Apple, your Microsoft, your Nvidia, your Tesla. You could have had a crazy, crazy returns when you look at some of those guys. Looking at NVIDIA, um, which of course I believe is the number one that have just crushed it in the S&P 500. So far this year, they're up about 220%, which is just insane, guys. So if you put money into it, you're up 220% through the, ri the rise of AI, really making and catapulting a por portfolio. But if you look in the entirety of 2023, you got Bitcoin up 150%. You got a lot of companies that are up crazy, crazy amounts, which of course are bringing up that S&P fund, are bringing up a lot of other funds with it, a lot of markets that are doing incredibly well. Even though we had some issues with the banks a little while ago, overall, we are still seeing a lot of growth. So overall, guys, putting money into an account, and the sooner you invest, before you start that road though, and as much as I do love investment and really stress it, you have to eliminate debt. There's not a video that goes by guys that I do not really stress the debt elimination, whether it is you know doing financial counseling with members, if it is talking to everyone on YouTube, a lot of the comments that I get, you have to eliminate the debt. When you look at even the highest yields that we're seeing in the market, when you start coupling in 22, 25, 30% credit card debt, that high interest debt, is crippling exactly what you have the ability to um, actually invest. So once you kind of corner that, you pay it down, debt snowball, debt avalanche, completely get rid of that. That is gonna give you the power to keep and retain a lot more of your wages and a lot more of your income, allowing you to invest it in the market and you'll be seeing those solid returns and you'll be well on your way to being a millionaire status. For me personally, guys, we're about halfway there personally between 401ks and investment accounts. I don't take the equity in the house. I don't take the equity in the vehicles. The modern day millionaire is not something at all that I am looking to do because home values continue to increase, which means overall um, you can get a lot closer and a lot faster to that millionaire if that is the way that you kind of want to swing it. But again, for me personally, guys, it is having that million dollars in investment account. That way I can take some off the top during retirement, not touching the golden goose or essentially the, the principal balance of it. So if I stay at a million, million and a half, two million in an investment account, by the time I retire, if I take 50 or $100,000 out of there every single year, just based on the growth factor or on the return, I will not touch the original principal, which essentially would go to my kids one day when I no longer need it and I'm no longer here. So all right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think about the millionaire status. And as always, thank you guys for watching.